Welcome, classes in session. Welcome to Spiritual Bites. Today, we are going to talk about uh, issues uh, that uh, we encounter during our everyday lives as Christians. We're going to share and talk about experiences and teaching and how to apply them to daily life. And today's topic for Spiritual Bites is being a Christian is harder than being in the Olympics. And to kick this off, um, I'm Dr. G. And I'm Rev. Kimmy. And this is a new season three. And we have a new um, subject that we're going to be adding to our uh, weekly podcast is Spiritual Bites to feed yep. you guys with spiritual lessons and teachings. And that's why we have the school bell, because class is now in session. Yep. <laughs> and um, it... This fits right in with, for me because I'm a university professor. And, and I was a teacher, and, teaching and law. For both yeah. of us, uh, something we never share with folks, but uh, I was in the Olympic trials, got third, Greco-Roman wrestling. And uh, you were at the elite level in gymnastics and used to uh, judge gymnastics too, right? Yep. Yep, for USA Gymnastics. So we're both very, very much aware of and familiar with the skill sets and how much effort discipline. and time, discipline it, it I did takes gymnastics. to be in the Olympics. I did gymnastics in the gym. I started at five in ballet, tap, jazz. And then I went into um, gymnastics at age seven and... Loved it, and I did gymnastics at school, you know, in the yard. I did it, you know, when I was little. In the yard at school, and then I did it in my yard at home, and then I did it inside the house when my parents weren't around. And then I did gymnastics at gymnastics. I breathed gymnastics. I did gymnastics all the time. How much did you do wrestling, Dr. G? Oh, I started wrestling in fifth grade, um, and the last time I at the Olympic trials was 83. I was in the Army by that time. And uh, like I said, it was Greco-Roman is what I did. Uh, so what did you do? Like, I went into showing horses. After I quit gymnastics, I went into showing horses, uh, equestrian, you know, English, not Western, because I was one of those snobs and had to have the cutest little English boots and the English outfit. And no, really, and I'm still that way, people. Very shallow. Riding horses is not about riding. It's about the outfit. (laughs) Okay, so I I really did. I went to, I just, just, I still ride. I was training horses recently and for the past few years and jumping. And then I was in a very bad horse accident and had to stop jumping. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I ended up hurting my back. Ours certainly wasn't about the outfit. I mean, all we had was a singlet and a pair of shoes. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> Life but, is uh, about with your shoes and your outfit. Yeah. Dr. G, get with it. So anyway, we're, we're talking about... Uh, how being a Christian is harder than being in the Olympics. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So now, um, for those who don't know, I taught, um, I did ministry for over 20 years in hospitals, um, hospice, and um, ER, ICU, regular beds, and including um, over 100 people weekly um, in a convalescent hospital. And so they were my regulars, and then if they... You know, some people are in a convalescent for surgery, and they're in there for for recovery um, or many different situations. But that's just an example for those who are temporary or in the alternative. They're there on a permanent level until they pass on and and go to be with the Lord. So I would minister um, to all these people on a regular basis as well as the other hospital with ER, ICU, and stuff like that. And... I would teach, and I would preach the same message. There were two or three people within each room, and I would, no kidding, teach the same message over and over and over and over and over for hours in one day. There is nothing like, we have an audience here on the podcast of so many people. Every state in America has listened to us repeatedly repeatedly over and over, as well as over 60 
countries. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that this is great, modern technology, to be able to preach one time to all of you. Whereas, like I said, in the hospital, I'm preaching over and over and over for probably 10 hours, preaching the same message to three people in each room. So it, um, I'm grateful for modern technology and that I can say it once. <laughs> So today we're going to be um, discussing being a Christian is harder than being in the Olympics. And what in the world does that mean? Uh, it means literally that. Jesus says um, it's a narrow path and not many will find it, which is Matthew seven thirteen. He's referring to entering into heaven. And just as in sports, not many enter into the Olympics. Like I worked super hard as a gymnast but I made it to elite level, which is right before the Olympics. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't make it into the Olympics, but I believe I am a Christian and I believe that it would be easier to be in the Olympics in some sport, which we'll discuss in a little bit, which sports are in 2024 Olympics. (laughs) Um, So because being a Christian, like many may think that we just, you know, being a Christian, we just call on the name of the Lord, we get baptized, and then we move on and, and we just live our daily lives. And that's all we have to do. And there's nothing more. And that can't be further than the truth. Um, we need to apply teachings found in the Bible and to do certain things. Jesus says to be doers of God's word and not just hearers, which is found in James 1, through 25. And when I make these citations, I'm talking about the Holy Bible, okay? You, if you don't have a Bible, no big deal, because thanks to modern technology, Google it. Um, Jesus says that... He gave us the keys to the kingdom, to the kingdom of God, to enter into heaven. His teachings in the Bible are found, um, he says that at Matthew 16, 19. So that means we actually need to do something on our part to use the key. If he gave us the keys to the kingdom, let's imagine we all have a physical key in our hand. Does that mean that being a Christian, we just hold that key and just kick back and never do anything with it and chillax and does it dr g no of course not of course what do we not. have to do with the key you get use it <laughs> keys in your pocket um they're not going to do you any good uh, you walk up to the front door of your house and just stand there all day like a squirrel you know and yeah some people i think never even pick up the key it was given but they don't even know the key was given which mm-hmm. is the bible the bible guys is the key yeah. you know to getting into the kingdom, we need to, like he said, we need to do, be be doers, not just hearers. We don't want to just read the Bible and then cruise on. I'm going to go shopping. I'm going to go get my cafe mocha, and then I'm going to go work on my tan. Yeah. You know, we have to apply it. You know, we're going through that drive through at Starbucks, and somebody says, you know, some something really mean, and then we want to yell back at them. You know, we have to have some kind of rules to go by to stay safe in Christ, our identity in Christ, and which we're going to discuss. So that means the key, he gave us the keys to the kingdom. That means put the key in your hand, pick it up, you know, put it in your hand, walk over to the door, insert it, turn it, open the door, and enter. There's, I mean, is that being a passive situation, Dr. G, or is that something we actually need to be doing physically a movement on our end oh yeah we we talk about that in sociology that's my doctorate in sociology and we talk about active actors and passive actors and and you have to be an active actor i mean it doesn't do any it's like having knowledge but then you don't do anything with it i mean he's giving you the keys and it's all about free will like i have keys you have keys and it's the person that actually uses that key. Why can't we just receive Jesus, get baptized, and cruise on, never go to church, and never read the Bible? Just live a life like that. That's not what Jesus says to do. He wants us to read the Bible. He is the Word of God, which is found in the Bible. And that is how we get fed, how we get these spiritual bites we're talking about. Yeah. To live eternally, to be able to live. 
Right? Yeah. From God's word. Yeah, we can't be passive actors. Another example of God says in the Bible in Revelation twenty two fourteen that blessed are those who washed their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life. Jesus is the tree of life. He is our reward. Okay, in life. Um, so now that is also something that we have to apply. People can, you call on the name of the Lord to be saved. You go get baptized now that you believe. Now you're going to do confessions. Oh, you know, whatever it is. Oh, I lied. You know, I lied. You, you don't need to go to a, uh, somebody and be confessing. You can confess straight on to God. Just say, Lord Jesus, you know, oh, God, I confess. Uh, I fornicated. I lied. Oh, my gosh. You know, and just do your confessions. You could do it alone. And he says, you confess your sins, you'll be forgiven. So that's what the washing of the word. Do Holy Communion. You want to wash yourselves in the blood of the Lamb of, of, and being forgiven. And that's through confession and through repentance. Okay. And you could do Holy Communion from home, guys. We do it every day. You buy the matzah. You could buy um, grape juice. You sanctify it. Never use it for any other reason but for Holy Communion. You could do that daily. Uh, Dr. G and I do it daily. And so you do, you, we never know when we're going to die, right? So hopefully you always want to be ready. In season and out of season, we don't know when we're going to die. And you want to be ready every day. And so I actually confess my sins daily. I do Holy Communion. I'm ready to go, right? I'm cleaned. I'm washed. Which God talks about in Revelation 22.14. Now, therefore, um, intentional acts that a believer must perform is to wash their robes. We need to love God, love others, and remain in him, in his works. We wash ourselves in the blood of the lamb, like I said, and remain in his works on the cross, which he did for us. Um, and then we want to be infected with love and to spread love and make it a contagious disease. <laughs> hmm. right instead of you know if you think about it hatred is very contagious out there oh, yeah. or or whatever it may be something negative we want to be the influence on love we want to be um spreading love around as if it's a, it's a contagious disease and hopefully other people will do it as well um so because god is love and that is remaining in him in his works is what he says we need to do as a Christian. We're safe in love. So, um, however, um, you know, we're human and just like anybody else, there are times that we don't want to forgive and we want to hate and, um, we want vengeance on our enemies and, you know, make them rot, <laughs> hoping the worst. I mean, have you guys ever done that? No, oh, no, yeah. we've never done that. <laughs> um, but oh, yeah. um, we we need to catch uh, the the proper heart attitude. And if it starts to get out of hand, we're noticing that, oh, I hate so-and-so, you know. Oh, and you're noticing, you, you, people need to pay attention to the symptoms of our, the condition of our spiritual heart, the way we do physically. You know, when you start to ache, your body hurts. And you're getting hot. You're like, oh, I feel like I'm getting a fever. And oh, my body is aching. I feel like I'm getting sick. You need to do the same thing with regards to your spiritual heart. Because we live and speak from the condition of our spiritual hearts. So we need to monitor that and take control and don't let it grow, you know, um, in the wrong direction. It's It's truly... It's a spiritual sickness to not forgive and love others. It's it's really a sickness of the heart. Have you ever thought of that, Dr. G? Oh, yeah. It's a sickness? Yeah. It's a spiritual sickness. Um, Just like worry will eat you up. Yeah. And being a Christian, daily living is easily compared to the game of baseball. I don't think I've ever heard anyone do that. Have you? Baseball? No. Yeah. Uh, to win the game, we must go around all the bases. 
first, second, and third without being tagged out, right? Mm -hmm. And the goal is to eventually reach home plate and to be safe, right? Okay? So now, if we sin, we can be tagged out. You know the way you can during baseball? They can tag you out if you're off first base, right? Second base, third. So what we need to do is to repent. Remain on a base. So repent. Mark one fifteen, And you will be safe. Otherwise, you could be tagged out and never make it to home base heaven. For instance, in reality, that would be, Jesus says that fornicators, liars, and stuff like that are not going to make it into the kingdom. So that's how we could step off the base and get tagged out, is to continue in sin. We're supposed to repent and stop sinning, and that's remaining in the works of Christ. So that will keep us safe. Otherwise, we get tagged out and we won't make it. Therefore, Jesus says in John 15, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Well, what is fruit? Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And that's found at Galatians 5, 22 through 23. And it go on to say, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will um, bear even more fruit. We are the branches that can be cut off. There is no sin in Christ. If there is no sin in Christ, then that means we cannot have sin in us. Or common uh, sense says that we will not remain as a branch. Does that make sense? Yep. So the branch survives from being attached to the vine. It does, it takes on the nutrients, the water, etc., right? Is in the branch with the yep. vine? Yep. <laughs> so it has to be attached or it'll die. Yeah, exactly. So it's compared to eating and drinking of the Lord, right? Because he's the vine where the branches. He works on the cross. We, we need to stay in his works on the cross. So we must only live by his works and nothing else. He goes on to say, if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. John fifteen five. And that is making reference to the second death. For believers can face a second death, though they're saved. So they, you know, there is an act that we must perform, which is obeying God's word. It sounds very, it makes no sense. But if you, if you make logical sense that love, God is love. And if you stay in his presence and you spread that presence around love to others, you're going to be safe on first, second, or third base, and eventually make it into over the home base, heaven. We must be vessels of love, okay? Um, Jesus says that the we live and speak from our spiritual hearts, and we cannot let our spiritual hearts get clogged up. We can see it like pipes. It needs to flow like a pipe does with water. Mm -hmm. If unforgiveness is in there or hatred, that clogs the pipe of love flowing through us, right? We're supposed to be carriers of love, God, God's presence. So we need to make sure to pluck out unforgiveness and hatred because for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good. And the evil person out of his evil treasures brings forth evil. That's Matthew twelve thirty four through 40. We must be vessels of love flowing in and through us. That is why Jesus says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That's John 13, 35. So this is a good test, an indication of those who are Christians and true followers of Jesus. And if they don't love you, according to Jesus, this is a sign that they are most likely not his true disciple. For instance, what happens if we do not apply forgiveness and love? We will grow more bitter and love will run cold. God says, because lawlessness will multiply, the love of many will grow cold. That's Matthew 24, 12. And we can look at that. Just look at the daily mass shootings, for example. 
I'm not really sure why they specifically are doing that case by case, but I can tell you generally that they are doing it based on the condition of their spiritual hearts. At some point in their life, they chose to hate and they chose to take vengeance in their own hands rather than what Jesus says to do. Let God take vengeance, not us. God specifically orders us to do this. Yet, we see mass killings daily. He says in Romans twelve nineteen, not defending yourselves, dearly beloved, but rather give place unto wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Now, there is a key word there to note. He says, wrath of God. So if you're sitting around thinking, when, when God, when are you going to take vengeance on my enemies? And you sit on your lawn chair and you're kicking back and you're chilling and you got your popcorn in hand and you got your Coke or beer (laughs) and you're waiting for the show to begin. I mean, how many people do that? I hang around, my my, um, closest friends are cops and I had a cop friend. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm not going to say who, but he's the one who told me about that. Yeah, you just get get out your lawn chair, (laughs) you know, and just wait for it. You know, how much, how many of us wait for it? You know, God to strike down our enemies, you know, (laughs) and we're sitting around waiting for it. But you know, this is wrong. It is not in line with God's timing. He said, God's, you know, the wrath of God, not Kim's wrath, right? He means in his timing, not ours. So God, so we need to go and pick up that lawn chair and go put it away, unfortunately. (laughs) <laughs> it's not going to it's not going to happen in our timing right, right? right. he's going to do it when he wants to and unforgiveness and anti-love should be compared to a weed dr g have you ever had a beautiful garden of roses or some kind of flowers oh of course i love gardening and then Vegetable have you gardens, have you ever gardens. found a weed in that beautiful garden oh it's aggravating it's all get out <laughs> now what happens if you leave that weed does it does do other weeds pop up Oh, yeah, you get two and then four, it's like exponential. And have you ever just left it alone to see what happens if you let grows the, the weeds grow in a garden? No, I go for it right away. Would they overtake it? Oh, yeah. Okay, so that is, it will grow and it will quickly take over your garden, right? So two, what happens in our spiritual hearts? We should guard um, our spiritual hearts daily. If unforgiveness or hatred, which should be compared to the weed, or vengeance starts to appear um, in our spiritual hearts, it should be immediately pulled from its root. So it does not overtake the beautiful garden, which is compared to our spiritual hearts. We need to let love in there. We need to be a forgiving people, loving and kind. The fruits that I read earlier, which is the indication fruits of salvation, it comes from the Holy Spirit, Right? And so I don't think, I think that people take care of their cars better than they take care of their spiritual hearts. People need to sit around and monitor. Wait, I'm starting to hate that person. Oops. You know, I better pray about it. If you can't forgive them, just seek God and ask him, oh, Lord, help me to forgive this person. Please get it out of my heart. And it, trust me, he will. It'll take time, but, but you will. You'll get over it. God help me to forgive. I choose to forgive so and so. Please heal my heart now. Make it new. Get the garbage out. Get the weeds out. And please put in your, take up your throne in my heart, Jesus. And let all the good come on in and rain and get rid of the garbage. And you actually can talk to God that way. <laughs> it works. And heal the, the wounds of my heart. Maybe you're broken hearted and you want to take vengeance. Don't. Just let your heart heal and trust God. Say, God, I just give over my enemies to you. You handle them. My enemies, known and unknown to me, I give them over to you. And you handle them. That's exactly what I say. And he does. Um, So now it is extremely difficult to forgive and love our neighbor. And who is our neighbor, Dr. G? It could be anyone. It could be your brother, your sister. It could be the person next door. It could be... Someone you run into, a complete stranger in the grocery store. Now, we're Christians. So does that mean that we only love our Christians? 
No. What about, do we just love people at our church and forget about the others? Because they're not real Christians. They don't go to our church, you know. You know people like that? Have you ever heard people like that? Oh, our church is only real Christian church. Yeah. Oh, you know, they get all competitive. and yeah. Okay, it's about unity. You need to be very concerned if you're one of those saying that out there. Oh, we're the only real church. Those, those are not real Christians. And Jesus said you're going to know them by their anti-love. He said, you will know my disciples by their love for one another. And Christ, Jesus is all about unity. He destroyed out division in gender. He said there's no gender in salvation. He destroyed out differences. There's no more um, Jew. There's no more Hebrew, right? There's no more. He's, he, he nullified it on the cross. He merged everyone together. He doesn't like, like I'm a Jewish believer in Jesus. So I'm better than an, a Christian like oh, you, for instance, Dr. G. Are you a Jewish believer in Jesus? No, I was um, a raised in a Gentile Christian okay. home. So I'm better than you because I'm a Jew. He says first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. So that makes me better, right? No. no. Okay. You really want, here's another thing to monitor. My church is better. I'm better. I do all this ministry. Do you guys know how much ministry I've done and how much time? Like on all these cases, these missing person cases, I don't get a dime. I actually spend my own money, my own money on gas for years. I use my, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm better. I'm better than you all. I serve God. I do all this. No, that is sickness. That would be a spiritual disease. To have a heart attitude like that is pride. And it's not true because we live and speak. We're, we're living from God's works. That means that I'm living from God's works in me. Your work living from God's works, even though you sit around and do nothing, mm -hmm. right? But go to church and whatever. So that doesn't make me better. That just means that God's using me more. You know, like in the physical body, he says that the body of Christ is compared to our physical body. Which body part do we use the most? He, it's actually in the Bible, guys, if you don't know this. What do we use the most? I don't know. Our thumb, our finger? Our, our, our hands, index, our feet, index finger, our tongue. Okay, yeah. So, so I would be a part. Let's just make believe, because I do a lot of ministry and for years. Let's just say I'm the index finger of the body of Christ. We're all a body part, mm -hmm. and Jesus uses us, right? So, would that does that mean that we love our index finger more than the little pinky that's never ever used? No. <laughs> I'm very protective over my pinky, like nobody's taken it. I love it, just the same as my index finger. That is the body of Christ. That is how people are used and the way to compare. Just because somebody is in ministering on TV doesn't mean that God loves them more or that they're more um, precious to God than the little person who's doing nothing and sitting and chilling in their bed and watching Netflix all day. If you have the spirit of Christ within you, you belong to him. That's what the Bible says. So nobody's better than anyone else. And I'm not better because I'm a Jewish believer in Jesus. Because there's no more. We're all in the body of Christ. He got rid of all divisions. So Jesus loves everyone. And so the neighbor is everyone, regardless of age, race, gender, religion, nationality, because people listen to us in different countries. Jesus loves you just the same. And if you're listening and you're not a Christian, Jesus still loves you because God is love and he loves everybody. Yep. God is good all the time. So our neighbor is everyone and everyone means everyone. <laughs> everyone. He's everyone. So we got to love everyone. Not because, oh, they don't go to my church. I don't have to love them, right? Oh, they're not Christians. I don't have to love them. That's all not true. That's error. That's an error in belief system. So forgiving and loving everyone keeps your foot safe, like I was saying, on first or second and third base. See, love is your foot being safe on a base. And compared to the game of baseball in America, for those listening in the UK, um... I guess that's football, isn't it? 
that I'm thinking of. Football and soccer. Is baseball known as baseball in Britain? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm not thinking. But I did catch my error. I'm thinking of football, right, and soccer. How it's different in the different yeah. country. So it keeps you connected. Well, congratulations, I'm human. <laughs> It keeps you connected to God who is love. And if you play that game of baseball, applying love in every circumstance correctly, you will eventually reach home plate and be safe in heaven. Again, simply applying love and unforgiveness keeps you safe and on that narrow path that Jesus talked about. So who's good at baseball, I ask? Are you good at baseball, Dr. G? Uh, I was. When was the last time you played baseball? Oh, I goodness. think it was in elementary school. Um. That was just yesterday since I'm 21 yeah, forever. High school, Boy Scouts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, elementary school, I right? Could, uh, senior high, I could bat right or left handed. And... <laughs> so I what was, so bad? were you good at it? I'd say decent. <laughs> Did people tag you out? Oh, yeah, I got like, a couple <laughs> things. And by, I had to have been, by, I don't remember by, it, but I had to have. By trying to bend the rules and steal the next plate. The next base. Oh Took yeah, my foot off the base and tried run to the next one. Okay, so um, compare Got the tagged out. Okay, we could be tagged out if we go and continue to sin. Yeah, we that's how we get tagged out as Christians. I'm using baseball as a means for us to kind of understand the importance of staying in love. It keeps you safe. Your foot on that base. That is the way it is in the spiritual realm, and I'm trying to make it very simplistic. For people to understand, they're like, why do I have to love my enemies? Why do I have to love my neighbor? Why do I have to forgive people? This is ridiculous. Why would I? It is not natural to love our enemies. No, it's not. But with Jesus in you, you can. With the Holy Spirit in you, you can. The fruits of salvation, the love and the peace and everything I read, the patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, all of that you should be able to. And it's an indication you are a true believer in Jesus. You're saved. You got that Jesus in your throne of your spiritual heart. He's in there. The promised Holy Spirit is in there and making you fruitful for his kingdom. So the path is narrow as the sport of women's gymnastics. For instance, on the balance beam, that's quite narrow. That's the narrow path. Jesus says there's a narrow path as a Christian. And few are going to find it. Few are going to find heaven. So do you have good balance on that balance beam? (laughs) God compares being a Christian to a competition. And he says to, has anybody noticed that God calls forth a competition in the Bible between Christians? He says, "Um, outdo one another in showing honor. And that is found, Google Romans 12.10. It says it. You guys, this is a competition. Are you a good competitor? And frankly, it would be easier, I think, honestly, to be in the Olympics than it is to be a Christian. Because it's difficult. It's not a natural thing for us to want to love our enemies or forgive people, our enemies, uh, who've done really wicked, evil things to us. Yeah. And um, so, with that being said, which sport, Dr. G, is the easiest of all the Olympics that we've noticed in the 2024 Olympics, guys, next month in July? Today is June 8, 2024. Yeah, Paris. And, yeah, um, I think I noticed the easiest would be table tennis. There's skateboarding, but, you know, I tried skate. I was really good as a kid, and I tried it a couple of years ago, and I fell right away. I'm not kidding. The moment I put my second foot on the skateboard, I went down and I'm like, okay, lesson learned. I'm not young anymore. Go, and I returned it. <laughs> yeah, skateboarding. I, I would keep the doctors very busy too. No, seriously, I thought it'd be a good way to work on my core. Like, you know, you're, you're pushing it and you're, you could get some easy exercise. I just thought this is easy. Yeah. It wasn't, not anymore at my age. But as a kid, I was good at it. Um, but what else is super easy for the Olympics? Well, um, I suppose you could argue shooting. A table tennis is pretty easy. Shooting? Yeah, archery. You just sit there and squeeze a trigger. But Archery. Know, there's a lot of muscle control, motor control, squeezing versus... I think shooting would jer- be easy. You and I shoot. We shoot guns. 
Like that would be really easy. You could even, you could even chill, man. You can sit on, you know, sit on your high knee and sit down and do some shooting. You don't even have to stand no. up. <laughs> Archery too. You could chill. Just kick it, man. <laughs> that chair with the beer. No. Just kidding. <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> yeah, they're all. They're I don't all drink beer. Even like <laughs> bobsled and luge. I mean, all you gotta do is jump on the thing and ride it down. But you do have. There is some danger there, and yeah. So anyway, guys, you know the Bible is you know God in the Bible is actually if you really really delve into it and you check this out and on a daily basis hunt for God. Have you guys tried to find God? It's like he's really, really, really hard to find on a daily basis. It's the most challenging relationship to be in. If you guys like a hard-to-get person, <laughs> try to find God. But it, you can also, he's also very easy to find, which is you just call on the name of the Lord to be saved, like the Bible says in Acts 2. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. You just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior, and forgive me all my sins and acknowledge that you're a sinner and actually mean it. You can't just say it. And he will save you. And then the promised Holy Spirit will come into your heart and you're going to have a teacher. He's going to convict you of your sins. He's going to fill you with all that fruits of salvation. And your life, guaranteed, will never be the same. And if you're in a country where you have to hide that you're a believer, you can do it. Because the Holy Spirit will teach you his ways. If you have to survive without a Bible, you can. The Holy Spirit's going to teach you about God. And he will convict you of your sins. Just if you feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit, just say, Oh, I acknowledge that sin. Forgive me. and Because he's, he's going to teach us the truth and to know the truth. and Which is a part of that is to be children of God are corrected. Mm -hmm. Yep. The Bible says that he corrects his own. And if you're not being corrected, you need to worry. You need to be able to get on your knees right now and ask God to save you. Lord, come into my heart and save me. A wicked sinner and just let it, let him come in and rule. And you will be born again in the royal kingdom. And quite frankly, you're going to be compared to, you know how like uh, Prince Charles, which King Charles now, he was born into an identity, correct, mm -hmm. into this world as a prince. And then he graduated into, you know, being the king. And so this is something that he's born into. He didn't just develop. And it's the same for us as believers. You become born again in the kingdom of God. In the spiritual realm, you're born again. You're no longer that identity born from your mother's womb. You're now going to be one with God through Christ, his works, and you're going to be of a royal nation. You're a king and a saint and a priest. Okay? That's what the Bible says clearly. We're born into that identity in Christ. So now some are teachers. Some are um, prophets. Some are apostles. Some are etc. There's an identity. We don't develop into, oh, I want to be an apostle. Oh, you know, because that's like top of the heap. So now I'm going to say I'm an apostle. I'm going to go study to be one. No, it doesn't really work that way. We're born into an identity. Some are princesses like Princess Diana or et cetera. No, actually, she was married into being that identity, right? Yep. So that's a poor yep. example. So anyway, you guys get my point. So um, if you guys... Um, if you guys have difficulty forgiving and loving people, just reach out to God, pray to him, God, help me, saturate me with love. Please teach me how to love others and to forgive others and, and change my heart. Because we can have that bitterness grown in there. You guys don't want to become a bitter person. The example of it are these people out shooting people or the road rage people. You know, my gosh, just just forgive. <laughs> Let it go. Give it to God. God can handle it. Um, we don't need to be people like that. And so, you know, life isn't really about he who dies with the most toys wins. Is it, Dr. G? 
Certainly not. <laughs> you guys have heard the saying, right? He who dies with the most toys wins. That's right. It's a doggy dog world. You know, that yeah. is not even, guys, that's not the attitude to have in life or mm-hmm. to live by. It really is about love. It's about loving people. It's about being that good Samaritan, the person who needs help. I mean, we help on missing person cases because, you know, we have the gift or the heart. We have the gifts and we have the heart to want to help. And we have the financial means to help or just to pray helps people. You guys see missing persons or whatever the case, pray. You know, prayer is is the best thing to give to other people. It's really a good thing to do. Um, So anyway, so we need to work on our heart attitudes. And we need to make it that being a Christian is not harder than being in the Olympics because we have Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit. And all we have to do is let him live in and through us. And he will get us through it onto that home base. Right? Like the game of baseball. Now, if you guys have any prayer requests and want to make an appointment for a spiritual counseling or prophetic word or a word of knowledge session with me or any questions and or comments please reach out to us via email that is at rev g at gmail.com that's r-e-v-k-y-m-m-i dot d-r-g at gmail.com and may you be blessed to know your maker firsthand and to walk in a personal relationship with God daily for God is good when things come your way and negative and people are being mean to you and people don't love you and that's not God doing it don't blame God it's a condition like we talked about it's a condition of the hearts of those who hate you of those who don't want to forgive you by no means Jesus died for us he's for us and not against us there's no way that God is going to do something against himself because he lives in and through us now. So don't think, oh, this is something that, you know, I deserve back. Oh, there must have been something I did to deserve this kind of evil back on me. No, you're born again into the kingdom of God and that things don't work that way. It's the enemy. <laughs> the enemy doesn't like us because Jesus lives in and through us now. Um, So... Um, remembering then that God is good. And if you do not know Jesus and want to, again, I want to say, please repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And please give me the gift of life, eternal life with you in heaven. And get the Bible, read online if you need to the Bible, um, go to the book of John and start there. And I can guarantee that your life will never be the same. And we do have people follow us in Mecca and other countries, over 60 countries, and some of those countries cannot have a Bible. I just want to say to you again, encourage you, you can follow Jesus daily. You, If you can't physically go get it or follow online the Bible, that's okay. Because when you call in the name of the Lord, you're going to get that promised Holy Spirit. And he teaches us the truth. And he will teach you about Jesus and the truth. And you will be able to survive with just the Holy Spirit in those circumstances. And pray, pray daily for God's will to be done in your life, okay? And we pray, Lord, for everyone who received you and who are followers here, Lord God. I pray you draw them near to your heart. Take up your throne in their hearts and lead them in the ways of everlasting life on that narrow path. And make it, Lord, that we can be overcomers, be true Christians by loving people and forgiving them and trusting you in vengeance that we don't need to take it um, in our own means. Amen. And we are going to talk to you guys on our next episode and God bless you all.